everybody. Welcome back to Humans of Springford. This is the special event that we're doing because of the lockdown measures of the COVID-19 pandemic. We launched this a few weeks back and now we're off and running and we're excited to use this opportunity to highlight uh, more of the people of the Springford community. Maybe not people that have a brick and mortar business that we're highlighting, but we get to know the people behind the work that's being done to revitalize both the twin boroughs as well as the greater Springford area of Upper Providence and Limerick Townships. So my guest today is Spring City Borough Mayor Donna Kern. Donna, thanks for your time today. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's nice to be here. Well, uh, as we do on the show, we like to go back and just get the personal stories behind, uh, whether it be the businesses or the people, the prominent civil servants. Uh, we've we have in the past interviewed the Royers Ford Borough Mayor, Jenna Antonowitz, so I'm excited to have now the Spring City Mayor. Uh, I know it's a relatively new position for you, so I'm interested to hear just the journey of how you ended up uh, in the seat that you're now occupying and uh, some of some of the uh, the things that went into your decision to run. But first, I will toss it over to you. Let people know uh, your backstory, uh, where your life began, and um, and how you ultimately ended up to where you are now here in Spring City. Oh, well, thank you. I uh, originally was born in the Ohio area and uh, met my husband in college. And we uh, ended up going through college. I have a degree in psychology. Uh, he went on to seminary. I ended up with a PhD degree from Lancaster. Uh, that's called putting hubby through. <laughs> <clears throat> from Lancaster Theological Seminary. Uh, we were in the Lehigh Valley, and we moved down here to Spring City in 1997 Okay. Uh, for my husband to take on the ministry at the First United Church of Christ in Spring City. A, a lot of people know that as the food pantry church. <laughs> uh, we've had the food pantry there for, uh, I'm thinking, 30, 40 years. They've had a, a fantastic food pantry. Anyway, so we've been here about 20 two years, 23 years. Um, so what got me into being the mayor? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I've worked as the administrative assistant at the church and okay. I've been very involved in my husband's ministry, helping people. And I thought that this was a new way that I could still reach out to the, the people of Spring City just to, you know, how can I help? I, I help a lot through the church. Yeah. Have a lot of connections through the church. And I thought, well, let, maybe I can do more. Yeah. So that's what got me uh, to running. I have to say that uh, several people kept encouraging me to run, <laughs> saying that I would do a good job. I, so we'll see yeah. <laughs> how, how it goes. Um, but I, I really enjoy it. I did a lot of, praying obviously if we're in the ministry we're yeah. christians and i did a lot of praying am i supposed to do this and so as the primary came up i said okay god you know if you want me to do this then i'll win the primary if not i'm okay with it right. because you have someone else that you want in there mm -hmm. and not me and then i won the primary and then i said okay well you know god if you want me to still you can put an end to this when the election <laughs> comes up you know if i don't win i'm okay right uh you know and and i was very interested in and tried to be helpful to my opponent and thinking okay you know and i won so i guess <laughs> god really wanted me to be here yeah <laughs> in spring city so i've only been in office since january okay um I have met with Mayor Jenna in Royers Ford, and immediately we have a wonderful bond. Mm -hmm. I, we really enjoy sharing. Uh, we're interested in trying to see what we can do more to get the two the two boroughs together. Yeah. On some projects, uh, but then you know, COVID has hit, so yeah. that kind of <laughs> ground everything to a halt. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, de definitely ground things to a halt. Yeah. The. Um if I could go back a little bit, tell me, you had said you went to, you met your, your husband in college. Was yes. it, you were both uh, at seminary together? Is that, was that, or that was after you went to college that he went, went on to seminary? That was after college. Okay. We, Where did you attend we college? Met in, we met in college. Uh, we got married in college. Okay. And where did you, where did you go? Then Waynesburg University. Okay. Well, that's It's in Ohio, you said? No, that's in oh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Oh, is it? Okay. 
That is in Pennsylvania. So yeah. you, that's what brought you ultimately to Pennsylvania was the college? Yes. You had said you were from Ohio. Okay. And well, then, well oh. my, as, when I was like in sixth grade, we moved to Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. For, and you what, know, with my, what, my dad's job. Okay. Is that, you said the Lehigh Valley? Is that where you grew up? Um, I'm no. Sorry. I, I grew up in the Pittsburgh area. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's close to where Waynesburg University is okay. in the Pittsburgh area. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we, my husband and I met at a Bible study. I was uh, playing guitar and leading the singing, and he had come, and he secretly in his mind said, boy, that's the kind of woman I'd like to marry. <laughs> and then, uh, but those of us who were involved in the Bible study, we sort of secretly said, okay, you, you learn who those four people are, you do those four people, you do those. So he was in the four that I was supposed to find out who they were oh, that's and invite cool. them back. <laughs> right. And I, I totally embarrassed him. Uh, he <laughs> was trying to leave afterwards because I came over to talk to him and he was going to leave and I let, grabbed onto his arm and wouldn't let him go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was sure that I heard his brain saying, this is the kind of woman I'd like to marry. <laughs> and uh, so I got to know him and it just went from there. That's incredible. Uh, that's so funny because actually I, I grew up in the church myself um, and I used to lead the the music for a young adults group. And that's um, kind of, my, I had met my wife. She, she taught at the school that my, my church had, and uh, we had kind of seen each other in passing and I noticed her. And then she noticed me because I was leading the, the music and she was like, Oh, he's leading the music for this young adults group. He must be like a okay guy. You know, they wouldn't pick just anybody. So it was kind of a similar story. It was like, Oh, this is the kind of guy I could take an interest in. So, uh, and then we ultimately, you know, We've been, uh, we'll be married 15 years in July. So <laughs> it's yeah. kind of, uh, but yeah, that's, it, it's interesting too, that, you know, the, um, the, the uh, affinity, like when, that's such a huge part, especially, and, and not to talk too much about faith um, to, I have no problems talking about it, but, you know, obviously some people will be like, oh, this is just, they're just going to preach with me, whatever. But um, that that's such an important part, uh, a common ground in, in a relationship. So to, to be able to meet people in that same boat, um, it kind of eliminates some of those conversations that most people have to have, you know what I mean? We're like, okay, we're on the same, we're on the same team here in terms of what we believe. So then we can start from there. I feel like that that's kind of comforting to know or it was for me as well. Um, so what, um, the sem when you decided to go, uh, your husband started to go to seminary. Um, you said Lancaster Theological Seminary. Yes. So did you actually live out there in Lancaster, or you was he? Yes. Do you, oh, he did. Okay, because I actually yeah, yep. I work at Sight and Sound Theater as well. I did until this all shut the theater down, but um, yeah. I still do. I have an intent to return, but since September 2018, I've been a performer for Sight and Sound, and I drive from Royers Ford to Strasburg. Uh, five times a week. <laughs> um, it's about an hour drive. drive. Yeah. It's a nice scenic drive though. It, it's not too bad. I drive right through Spring City to uh, through Chester Springs uh, up to um, Route 30 and then and then I'm off to work. So I miss that commute actually because I've been stuck at home for two months. But um, yeah, so it's we love that area and you know we love this area. We moved to Royers Ford in 2017 uh, three, it'll be, well, today we're recording this on the 15th, but, um, May, May 20th was the move in date to 2017 for when we moved to this area. Um, mm. uh, so we, we've loved it ever since. And we're, you know, we loved it even before we moved here, which is why we, we picked it. So, um, so you would, um, once your husband graduated from seminary and then he finds a calling or a position and that's, is that ultimately what led you to spring city was the position that he took? You said, yes. Okay. Um, yes. what in the, during that time, did you, was it a package deal? Like you, from that moment on, you were also working at the church, uh, or was that not an immediate thing? That, that was not an immediate, you know, an obvious, oh, she's going to work at the church. Um, yeah. the church secretary at the time then decided she was going to retire and, um, uh, the job was open. I applied, uh, I had done that kind of work in the past. Mm -hmm. So, uh, then I got the job. So I've been working right alongside of him, which is kind of nice. It's a, um, it's a good ministry. You know, I know where he's going with, with certain things, you know, and he, 
he allows me, to, <laughs> he actually allows me to make changes and to do things because I know what he really is looking for. Um, I'm the extrovert of the family. He's more okay. the introvert. Yeah. So uh, we make a good team. We, we really do. Yeah. Was that an adjustment period for him as an introvert to, to be in a position? Um, I mean, obviously he went to school for it, uh, but like to kind of have to be that like church leader and be out in front of everybody. And was that, did that kind of take him outside of his comfort zone? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. It, it did, but I, he does a wonderful job. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I find that he uh, God often enables us to do things we didn't think we were capable of ourselves <laughs> when, when he calls us to do something. So uh, yeah. I can definitely uh, agree with that. Um, most of the time, you know, people often said, uh, you know, cause I, I'm, I'm a performer and I'm, I'm musically inclined. Um, I, I don't have a problem doing that. Usually I know God is leading me to do something when it's taking me outside of my comfort zone. Cause it's not about me at that point, <laughs> you know, right. it's not about, because I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this, God. So you're going to have to do it. And I think he likes well, that. He likes that attitude. <laughs> you know, he, he doesn't call the qualified. He calls you and then qualifies you to work. Exactly. Right. Yes. I love he, that. That's one of the quotes I often have to remind myself of because uh, yeah, it's totally true. Um, yeah. He, he cleans his fish after he catches them. That's what one of my pastor used to say. <laughs> Because people oh, that's are always a good like, one. I hadn't yeah. heard that one. That's a good one. Because <laughs> um, like, people are always like, I got to get my act together before I, you know, before <laughs> I do this. And he's like, no, like you come to me and I'll get your act together for you kind of a thing. <laughs> so. Right, right. Yeah. And then, you know, if, if we think that, that we've got it all figured out, it changes. Yeah, exactly. It, right. So you might as well just go with an open mind and let God lead. That's right. I had plans for 2020 and obviously they weren't in, <laughs> I, they weren't in the grand scheme of plans. So, no, uh, no. Uh, so beyond obviously uh, being involved in a church in a community is a huge, a huge responsibility in terms of your involvement in the community and having a food pantry and being a part of that beyond those things, were there other areas in spring city borough that you were um, reaching out that, that being a mayor would even enter your mind? Cause it just seems like, um, you know, usually people are like, oh, like I'm involved in this area. And then I kind of segue to this, or was it really just a big leap from, you know, your church involvement, the food pantry serving at, at the church, and then someone suggested it to you out of the blue. How did that kind of come about? Yep. They just suggested it out of the blue. Oh, really? <laughs> and I thought, really? You weren't like on borough yeah. council years ago or anything like that? No. Or, oh, wow. Okay. Nope. No, I had only ever attended a few council meetings in the past and i really don't have any political background yeah uh but i i always like to say i'm not politically inclined i'm people inclined oh that's cool <laughs> i i don't serve politics i serve the people yeah and and that's what i want to do and i i've been trying to reach out and uh make myself open to anyone who has questions concerns and then try and funnel those concerns into whatever area will satisfy that concern. So uh, d just a good example, I had uh, one of the merchants on Main Street mention that the crosswalk, when the Main Street was redone, the crosswalk was never repainted. And I said, oh, really? All I had to do was go and suggest it. And, and bingo, yeah. it happened the next day. So That's incredible. I, I think people don't know how to get things done and I'm hoping that I can help them, you know, to funnel the questions, the concerns in the right direction so that we can make Spring City a better place. Yeah, definitely. I, I think oftentimes it's that lack of, um, like, I don't know how, uh, yeah. that it hurts uh, in the long run because enough people say, I don't know how. And then nobody does anything. So to have somebody in the in a position, it's like, well, I don't know how, but I'm going to find out. That's a huge, that's a huge leap. And I think a lot of us sometimes we're like, well, somebody else will figure it out or whatever. But to take the initiative, and you know, I'm the kind of person where I don't like not knowing the answer. So I try to find out if I don't. I need to like, if somebody asks me something and I don't know what it is, then I like make it a personal mission to to figure it out and become the expert in that. I was kind of like that with previous jobs that I had, and 
I was the guy who would eventually become like the trainer of the department because I would like immerse myself in all of the standard operating procedures. And then when new people would come in, I'd be the guy that would kind of mentor them because I, I knew the ins and outs because I, I didn't like having to go to other people and ask them questions. I liked knowing. So uh, it kind of served me that way because of some of the positions that I've found myself to be in. So the fact that you said you're people inclined definitely lends itself to that because you want to, you want to meet the needs of the people. So if someone brings it to your attention and you know, you've never been, like you said, you've never been a mayor of a borough before, but yeah. you know what, I'm going to find out what, what it takes to get this done. So Yeah. And, and it's usually just some questions. It's yeah. just usually saying, you know, can we do this? Yeah. And what will it take to do this? Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't take, let's do it. Right. What, what are we waiting for? Yeah. Did, they, did you have, I mean, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Like what was the process of, entering the race and all that like because I there's one thing to be like oh I'm gonna run for mayor and my mom used to joke around about that about me like because I knew a lot of people in my community even before I lived here she's like you're you're like the mayor there you know people say that kind of stuff and it's like ha ha and uh when I I said well whenever I find a place I want to live you know I'm going to raise my family I want to be like the mayor there I don't necessarily want to run for the public office but I want to be someone who can connect people and and be known and not from a self-serving aspect, but just like, I want to be a, an asset to the community. So Discover Springford has, you know, made me kind of like the lay mayor in a way of these communities because I'm meeting people and meeting to know, uh, you know, Anil Dom of Borough Council, as we mentioned, Mayor Jenna of Royersford. And uh, I know, I know Eugene Sweeney. Um, I worked with him for a couple of community days, Spring City and, and the Music and Market Festival. So like getting to know these people, um, I don't know where I was going with that, but, oh, I was going to say, um, like, so like, but I would never know what to do if I actually said one day, like, Hey, I wonder if I did run for mayor, like, is there like a team that prepares you for that kind of thing? Is there a book you got from the library that told you like what to do? Like, what is the process like for something like that? Yeah, there is nothing written down, oh, let me course. tell you. <laughs> but actually, uh, Michael Weiss, who was the previous mayor, was a huge, huge help to me. Oh, he cool. would say, okay, you need to do this. And then um, Missy King, who I think is the Republican chairperson for the area, um, she was a big help. Well, she's a personal friend and yeah. she was a big help. And so when the word got out that, yeah, I would be interested, then I got a lot of help. That's great. On you need to, you need to go get this petition signed. You need to file this here. You need to file that there. So uh, the two of them were my biggest help. Um, I, you know, I had Gail Kern, who um, also works, I guess, in the Republican Committee, help me as well. But is there a again, relation? I, you know, is there a relation I'm, to the Gail Kern? Are you guys related, or is it different spelling? No, not different oh, okay. spelling. Actually, there is. Oh, is there? Oh, okay. We're cousins. Oh, how about that? <laughs> yeah, her husband and my husband are cousins. Oh, oh that's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I didn't even know her till we when we moved here. Oh, wow. To Spring City. Um, yeah, the, uh, I got involved in a field day at the elementary school with my youngest and they, the principal said, you know, okay, you can take over. And I said, thanks. <laughs> uh, and here's some people that'll help you. And Gail Kern's name was on there. And I called her up and I said, are, are we related? And she goes, I think so. Oh, wow. How about that? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I'm sorry. That's a roundabout. No, that's whatever. okay. I interrupted with the question. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I, do that. So, I tend to do that. Know, but- all those people helped me to know what to do, you know, how to do this first, how to do that um, second. Yeah. Uh, and there is nothing written down. It, it's <laughs> all, you got to know somebody to help you. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So um, in terms of your responsibilities as mayor, I, I asked a similar question to Mayor Jenna, like obviously being the mayor of Spring City is different than being the mayor of Philadelphia um, in yeah. terms of the, the level of responsibility <laughs> the compensation, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of differences there. So yes. uh, what is the, what is the definition or the, your job uh, description as mayor of Spring City Borough? You know, there is not one. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I cannot, I looked, I asked questions, you know, what is, what is my responsibility? So the only things I'm finding out is that I am responsible for the police department. Okay. I am officially the chief law enforcement officer, which, um, so the chief of police will talk to me if he's got concerns. Okay. Um, if he, you know, has an issue or a problem, but uh, 
I have to say though, our police department is wonderful. That's great. Uh, Chief White is very thorough. He's very detail oriented. He checks everything out before things happen. Uh, our full-time officers are great. The part-time, I'm still learning some of the part-time guys. I haven't yeah. met them all yet. Um, but I attend borough council meetings. I am the deciding vote if there's a, a stalemate, yeah. you know, or, but we have seven on the borough, so I'm okay. not looking that that's going to be an issue. Yeah, right. If you have an odd number, that usually takes care of that. <laughs> That does, that does, but uh, I just mostly work with the borough council members, um, and I'll, I'll tell you, our borough council is pretty active. Yeah. Um, they're very concerned about the people in Spring City. They're, they, you know, they're trying very hard to uh, reach out and to do the right thing yeah. for them. Yeah, I know that the, um, the Spring City uh, Business Association has started to really uh, ramp up efforts to... Yeah. Um, and, and have a liaison with the borough council and things like that, um, which is exciting to see just more and more people starting to get excited about what can be in Spring City. You know, um, mm -hmm. we've, we've highlighted a number of Spring City borough businesses on Discover Spring Ford. See if I can rattle them off of my head. Uh, Spring City Hotel was, I think, our fifth episode ever with Bill Hoffman. Mm -hmm. um, and the history in that building is so cool. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Tuned Up Brewing I've highlighted, F5 Fitness. Uh, George's Music, Chaplin's, um, Spring City Electrical Manufacturing Company, uh, Pops Ice Cream, which is now Birdie's Kitchen. I haven't featured Birdie's yet, but uh, we will once everything reopens again. Uh, they'll be on our short list for season four, which hopefully we'll still be able to... Our, our typical uh, season premiere is usually the Sunday after Royers Ford Community Day, just because it's like the weekend after Labor Day. It's a nice, It's a nice time to start a new season of a show, so... I think we'll be okay with that. I think, uh, you know, I start filming in August. I think we'll be able to at least have groups of a couple people together to record an episode. So, um, so I'm excited just because initially when we started this show, you know, I was looking at Royers Ford Borough because that's where I lived and I, and I wanted to highlight Spring City Borough as well. And much to my ignorance, I didn't know. I was like, oh, I don't want to run out of businesses. So I'll just do greater Spring Ford. Like I'll use the school district as my, uh, my um, boundary. That way I can also highlight Limerick. I can also highlight um, Upper Providence Township because um, I didn't want to, you know, box myself into the point where like after a certain amount of episodes, I was scraping bottom. Try but then I come to find out that each borough has like over a hundred registered businesses in it. And I'm never yeah. going to, I'm never going <laughs> to exhaust those resources, which is a no, good thing. It's exciting. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to just to see some of the and I, I just saw a post not too long ago of them. They were doing maintenance on the trees on the the, uh, the sidewalks in Spring City, and they're just really starting to to make the main street. Which I'll say, I'm, I'm living in Royers for. I'm a little jealous because, as I've been reminded by Spring City residents, their main street is flat. Royers Fords is a steep one. <laughs> so, it is. So uh, it's exciting to see what what is happening, and hopefully, what will continue to happen to get those storefronts. Uh, popping again and, and, and really thriving. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, in Royers Ford, we, we, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of behind the scenes work of pushing that. I, I think it was Alex Metricardi on Borough Council mentioned like, it's like you're, you're pushing this boulder up a hill and no one really sees that part. And then they were finally getting to the crest of it. And then the pandemic hit, <laughs> you know, so there's all this yeah. stuff that's like about ready to launch. We have a new restaurant that's supposed to open, um, a lot of the the open storefronts have been leased, but the businesses aren't going to open until they can actually really open. There's, it doesn't make sense for them, you know. So um, I'm excited to see what's on the horizon, um, but unfortunately, it just feels like the horizon keeps moving further away. <laughs> um, but I, I think that between the two boroughs, I'm really excited to see, especially like you had said at the beginning, working together. And uh, I've said this a, a number of times, but we've never talked, so I'll share it with you as well. Sorry for everybody who's watched or listened and heard me say this spiel before. But um, one of the things that makes Discover Spring Ford unique, I think, is the fact that we don't hyphen, uh, we don't hyphenate Spring Ford. And initially, I am, I have to be candid that that was by mistake. Uh, when I first started doing it, I didn't know it was such a big deal that it had to be hyphenated. I just thought it when I put the logo together, it didn't look right with a hyphen. 
it didn't like it didn't fit it, didn't, it just looked very like jarring so i was like i'll just put it together and i'll capitalize it so there's not like one one getting the the short end by having a lower case you know what i mean mm-hmm. so uh, and then someone very quickly pointed out like you forgot the hyphen and i was like ooh i i have a choice here i can either decide to redo everything and put a hyphen in it or i can own it and say well you know, I'm, I'm trying to, to bridge the gap between the two boroughs. So that's kind of how I rationalize not having a, and it also shows people that I'm not, I'm not sponsored by any specific spring forward organization. It's my own kind of thing. So that way I'm not like, I don't have to operate under the, the school district's restrictions, or I don't have to operate under the chamber of commerce's guidance. So I'm, you know, it's a unique thing. So when you said that, it, 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 it made me feel good when you said like trying to do more with the two boroughs together because there's a lot of shared history. Um, oh, yeah. We have three episodes, in fact, three hour long episodes from our first season with Will, Bill Bruner of the Springford Area Historical Society talking about that shared history. Um, so it's really exciting for me to be able to highlight um, stuff from both boroughs and see the things that are starting to happen um, yeah. to bring people out and about in the community. Sorry, I just went on a big long spiel, but I, I when I get excited, I just go and I just I'm long winded. So uh. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> so, um, what was it like? Uh, obviously, you're not watching the. It's not like watching a, a national election or something where you're looking along the bottom of a TV on election night, looking to see the precincts reporting and stuff. But like, what was the process like? When, once you found out that you won the primary, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm actually going to be. I actually could win this thing. I have like a 50%, you know, 50, 50 shot at this uh, or Mm -hmm. whatever it was. Um, What is the process like for an election of a a local thing? Like how did you, how were you notified that you won? Well, I went around when the polls closed and Mm -hmm. looked at the the tallies, you know, to see where I stood because you, when you finally get a letter from Chester County that says you won, well, it's like three weeks later. Oh, really? (laughs) Well, I couldn't stand that suspense. That's right. (laughs) I had had to know. How many votes, you don't have to say how many votes you won by, but how many people voted? Do you know like the total number of Spring City? Because it's only Spring City Borough that would vote. Do you know the amount total of, of people that are in Spring City Borough? Well, as of, I think, 10 years ago, the census, that was 3,400 and something. Okay. So, but obviously not that many people vote. Yeah, right. Maybe Which 60% is unfortunate. Yeah, I right. think that we should. We should all vote and, and get our opinions out there. Right. Because we can't vote someone in or have someone be elected and then turn around and complain. Oh, well, you know, they're terrible. Why are they? Well. Did you vote? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Did you well, make your opinion known? Yeah. And I think a lot of people fall into the trap of only considering the national election. Like they vote for the big ones, the governor, the president. But as we're seeing in something like this, this pandemic, like who you locally elected, it has way more clout than it ever, ever has because you have different counties having different desires and, and you know, people want the lockdown to stay people want the lockdown to be lifted because their county is nowhere near as in danger as you know the philadelphia county you know and they don't want to be treated as such so and it's the only voice that you can have is by going to your local representatives or your state senators and i think this has been this whole thing has been very eye-opening to the local and state level government whereas most people probably only concern themselves with the federal government because that's all the news really talks about Um, yeah so we, we, if we get our political opinions from the news, we're already in danger, I think. But, uh, uh, but yeah, this, this has really highlighted the importance of local elections, I think, so going through something like this because it's such a nuanced thing. And every, we can't have a one-size-fits-all type of a situation, unfortunately, yeah. as much as we would like to. So, yeah, it's, you might not have thought, you know, ah, the Spring City Mayor, what difference does it make? Well, pretty big if you have certain you know certain mayors in in the country who are deciding you know what we don't have any cases we're going to open you know things like that make a big difference like even though they won't necessarily you don't think that when you're voting in a local election like what what impact does this really have it has a very big one i think uh, especially when there's policies when you need a a majority vote or anything like that you know it's very important so i i encourage everybody to be educated and, and to, to make the right decision that they feel serves their best interests because that's ultimately what we have to do and the community's best interests. Um, so you found out by, you went around, you, you looked at the tally 
And then what was the, what was the general sense <laughs> that you were going through at that moment? Well, when I discovered I had 95% of the vote, oh, wow. <laughs> I, I figured God wanted me in there. <laughs> wow. So, That's a, yeah. a landslide. I don't think there's ever been an election of that unless maybe it's an incumbent type situation, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, but you know, I just, I, I figured, all right, God. Yeah. He Here opened we go. The, He didn't just open the door. He kicked the door down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, that's, so was, did that give you kind of a sense of peace that it was something so definitive that was very clear that you were moving in the right direction? It was, but then also a sense of awe and, oh, yeah? a, and a sense of like, uh, uh Oh, now what <laughs> am I, what does God have, you know, for yeah. in store? Yeah. So, what am I getting myself into here? Kind of a thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you, uh, I saw the post of when you, when you were took the oath of office or whatever you were inaugurated officially, um, obviously the, everything shut down in mid March. So you only really had two and a half months of like out and about mayoring as it were. Um, yeah. well, what are some of the things that you've discovered since you took office that you, uh, you didn't really know going into it? Are there any things that you've experienced that have been eye opening or, uh, pleasant, you've been pleasantly surprised by, uh, in your term as mayor, your short term as mayor so far? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really has has struck me yet because we are sort of very new right. in this. Um, I am pleasantly surprised at how um, easy the borough uh, council work together and That's how, cool. you know, I've, I've said this before and how they really have the best interest of Spring City in mind. I in the past, I wasn't sure. Yeah. to tell you the truth. Um, and I didn't really know a lot of them, but now that I've got to meet them and I see how supportive they are and, you know, they, they want Spring City to succeed. Yeah. Um, they want to do things for Spring City. And I think if we look back at, at Phoenixville and how that has just exploded and I'm looking at Royersford saying Royersford's on the right path. Yeah. Spring City can bounce off of that, and we, and we can really grow as Royersford grows. Yeah, you know, because we're just across the river, we're right there, and and like you pointed out, you know, our main street is flat. Yeah, <laughs> you don't you don't have to struggle going uphill. Yeah, right. Uh, so we're and the borough council is also we're working hard to try and get that new parking lot on Yost. Yes. Uh, to get the grants to get that fixed so that we can really use it and yeah. uh, i got to meet uh, just actually on the phone with representative chrissy Houlihan, okay. and then i asked if they would help us out with a letter uh, and senator muth has sent a letter and representative um, outen has sent a letter in support of this grant so we're really hoping that by the end of the summer we will hear if we've got this grant and we can do something with this parking lot so that yeah. we can alleviate the parking on Main Street so that this will all um, blossom. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and we're also working on, and I've just been in email contact with one of the borough council members, again, some uh, one of the guys, <laughs> he's stepping out trying to really help about painting parking lines on Main yeah. Street so that we can get a few more cars in there if everybody, you know, parks Stays. in their little spot yeah we'll right. get more cars on main street yeah um so it's, it's just little things like that but it, it there's a lot like you were saying before it's a lot of background work mm -hmm. that has to happen before you can actually see the results and a lot of people don't see that yeah how much work there is to it but there is a lot of work and then suddenly you know we we can do things yeah <laughs> i think so it's important go ahead yeah well we're just you know, excited and we're just trying to, to move forward um, as best we can with the COVID yeah. issues. Yeah, I think that this is, um, it's important that you stated that because I think it's very easy for us to be spectators and say, they should do this, they should do that. But it's a whole other thing to actually get enter the fray. And like, once you see the work that goes into it, it helps you to appreciate like, oh, okay, that there's a lot of moving parts. And you have to make sure that everyone is heard. And then you also have to make sure that anyone who's upset is also heard. 
um, mm-hmm. and try to iron those crinks, you know, whatever the word, the kinks out of that. Uh, there's just a lot of things. And, and I think it's very easy for us, you know, as, as constituents or however it is to, and I'm guilty of this myself. So, and anybody who follows my personal Facebook page, you'll know that um, we, you know, I have all the solutions if everybody would just listen to me, you know what I mean? So like uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's because everybody, you know, our voice is important and, and our vote is important. Um, but I think I'm, sometimes we, um, we we don't see the true power of it because we don't actually go beyond just saying something like you know each individual has the power to make a change but they actually have to enact it in their life they have to start to like actually contribute to the change rather than just talking about it you know yeah. um, so hopefully you know and i see a lot of things happening in the world and i see you know people who are apathetic starting to kind of pay attention a little bit more which is great and that's what hopefully more and more people will see that and we'll see uh, better results and, and more people lending a hand rather than a backhand, you know, uh, and, yes. uh, because it's very easy to be the person who's shouting down or shouting no or, or complaining, but <clears throat> it's quite another thing to put your name on a ballot and, and put yourself in the, the, the crosshairs of that, uh, political groundswell or that public opinion groundswell and all that. Um, so I, you know, I definitely don't take it lightly and I don't take lightly, you know, even at the smallest levels of boroughs and things like that. And, and, you know, not, not, it not being a full-time job for you and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't make it any less, um, stressful as it were, because you, you feel the, the needs of your citizens and, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I wish you nothing but success in what you you would like to accomplish for spring city and um just as i say that like is there any specific things that were on your mind uh, that you wanted to accomplish when you were running for mayor were there specific uh, talking points i didn't really pay attention sadly because i'm not in spring city but um uh, so i apologize if i'm ignorant of those things but were there any specific key um I, what do you call them i don't even know i'm not very political as, as you can see um like what are you what were your uh your running points or whatever that you that you wanted to see enacted once you became mayor well i didn't really have any um i didn't again feel i didn't campaign a great deal at all yeah because i felt again if god wanted me in there then you know i would be in there but there are several things that now that i'm in that i'm seeing um, i would love to change or upgrade or Mm -hmm. uh, whatever but we'll have to see you know if i can actually get that to happen right i'd love to see a new borough building okay our borough building is so small and inadequate uh the police department has a tiny little cupboard yeah (laughs) (laughs) they're just you know their offices just it's inadequate yeah um our borough manager needs some more space we um it's it's just needs to be updated we just yeah. need to to plow it all over and start new yeah we we really need uh, to have some place for our government to adequately work right i'd love to see our police department have another full-time officer on because where i live kind of behind in my backyard they're going to be building about, I think it's 178, don't quote me on that one, <laughs> new homes behind Wall Street and Huntsberger. Uh, so that's going to add to the tax brackets for Spring City. That's going to add, but that's, uh, that's also, it's adding a bunch of good things, but it's also going to add more, where there's more people, there's more crime. Not necessarily that they do it, but it brings crime in. We're going to need more officers. Yeah. To do that. Um, and like I said, in a, a better building. So those are my two um, areas that I'd love to see something happen. With. Yeah. No, that's great. I'm glad you got the opportunity to share that too, because I think it helps people to see, you know, like what are some of the things that could be looked at? Um, you know, obviously once things are um, a little bit more back to normal, those things can start to, but again, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that can be moving yeah. to kind of get those balls rolling so that once, uh, once people can get out there and actually start doing those things, they're ready to go because a lot of that legwork was already 
done. So that's, yeah. I'm glad you shared yeah. that. Yep. So Donna, thank you so much for this time. Um, is there any final things that you uh, would like to share? Uh, or if anybody would like to get in touch with you about a, a concern um, about Spring City, how, how, what's the best way they can reach out to you? Well, the, the best way would be through email. Okay. And my email address is mayor, M-A-Y-O-R dot Donna. And my name is spelled with one N, D-O-N-A okay. dot Kern at springcitypa.gov. I would love to hear any suggestions, any ideas, uh, whether we can do them or not in Spring City. It might be a springboard for something else that we can accomplish. So uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to serving the community, the people. That's great. Yes, um, I'm so thankful for your time. I'm thankful that you've put yourself um, put yourself forward to be somebody uh, that you, you know, people recognize that about you and they knew that you'd be successful uh, and you were willing to, to follow that leading um, between God using those people to speak to you and God himself. Um, so I, I wish you nothing but the best in your terms uh, for however long you decide to, to continue to, to re rerun and all of that. Um, and I'm excited to, to be a part of the Spring City and Royers Ford Burroughs revitalization efforts in any way that I can. Uh, and you. I look forward to the times that we can, uh, we can unite the two boroughs for different events once, uh, oh. once it's safe to do so. It's going to be great. That would be wonderful. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. And thank, thank, all you. Of you, thank all of you for listening or watching this episode of Humans of Spring Ford. Uh, it's really important for us to be involved in our communities. And uh, this, this has really taught me that being involved with these shows. It's been such a blast to get to know people. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed living vicariously through me as I've gotten out there to discover Springford. Uh, until we can get out there again, I encourage you to check out our archives. You can find all of our information on our website, discoverspringford.com. You can see all the past guests that have been on the show and find all their relevant links so that you can be ready to patronize these businesses and, and, and get to know these people in the Springford area once it's safe to do so. And until then, get out there and do what you can for Springford because it's a great place to live, a great place to work, eat, and explore.